Chapter 4 is all about graphing and writing linear equations. In chapter 4.1, we are going to graph linear equations. So you need graph paper for all of these homework assignments. Now, for your notes, you can just put them in your normal notebook paper. That's okay. So we're going to start with our key idea from section 4.1. Your key idea states that a linear equation is an equation whose graph is a line. So linear equation is your vocab word. And anytime you graph a linear equation, you're going to make a line. Now we have one more sentence for vocabulary. The points on the line are solutions of the equation. So the points are going to be the solutions. So what I want you to do is just write down this equation. This is still part of your key idea. y equals x plus 1. Now we can use a graph to show all of the solutions of this equation. Now once again, I don't want you to make this harder than it is. I want you to pick a value of x and a value of y that makes this true. So here's what we're going to use. You've probably done this before last year in seventh grade. We're going to make a t-table. x. x is what you plug in. y is what comes out. And you can plug in anything you want for x. You can plug in 5, 10, 100, negative 3, 1 half. You can plug in anything. So I'm going to plug in three values, negative 1, 0, and I'm just going to pick 2. So all I do is I plug in negative 1, 0, and 2 for each of them. So you can actually just plug them in off to the side, or you should be able to do them in your head. y equals negative 1 plus 1. Then we're going to plug in 0 for x. Then we're going to plug in 2 for x. So if you solve these for y, you would get negative 1 plus 1, which is 0, 0 plus 1, which is 1, and 2 plus 1, which is 3. So right here, you have three solutions. These are all solutions. They're also points. If you actually graphed these, I'm going to make a quick graph. And I want you to put the graph in your key idea. If you graph these, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3. If you graph them, you're going to make a line. All of the points on this line, there are millions and millions and billions of points on this line. All of these points on that line are solutions to this equation. Example number one. You're going to graph the equation y equals negative 2x plus 1. So we're going to make a t-table. Now, in the middle, I'm going to leave room for work. Now, I'll be honest, as 8th graders, you should be able to do this completely in your head. But on this assignment, I want you to actually show this middle step. But in the future, you can skip this whole center work area. X is what you plug in. Y is what comes out. You can make any table of values you want. Pick anything you want. It does not matter. But you have to pick three. In order to graph, you must always pick three numbers. I'm going to pick 0, 1, and 2. You can pick whatever you want. So 0, let's plug in 0. y equals, we have negative 2 times 0 plus 1. Here we plug in 1, negative 2 times 1 plus 1. And here we plug in 2, negative 2 times 2 plus 1. Well, negative 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1, that gives me 1. If I plug in 1, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 1 would be negative 1. And if I plug in 2, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, plus 1 is negative 3. So my three points that I'm going to graph are 0, 1, 1, negative 1, and 2, negative 3. So now I'm going to graph these. Now, notice when you graph, I have arrows at the end. I've labeled my x and y. So, if I graph these points, 0, 1 is right here. 1, negative 1 is right here. 2, negative 3 is right here. 
and we just made ourselves a line. Notice you are not connecting the dots. You are drawing a line through the points with arrows at the end. Example number two. Graph one-third x minus two. Let's make our table of values. X is what you plug in, Y is what comes out, and in the middle is where we show our work. Now, we have a fraction. By no means should you find that difficult at all. Fractions are easy. We're taking one-third of a number. Now, here's what I want to do. We are going to use zero. However, if you use one, you're going to take one-third of one, which gives you a fraction. If you take two, one-third of two, that gives you a fraction. What numbers can you take a third of that won't give you fractions? Well, what numbers can you divide by 3? This is all you're doing, dividing by 3. That's it. So what numbers can you divide by 3? Multiples of 3. So I would pick 0, 3, and 6. Once again, you can pick whatever you want. But if I'm picking multiples of what my denominator is, I will have whole numbers as my answer, or integers. I won't have fractions. So I'm going to plug in. One third of zero minus two, one third of three minus two, and one third of six minus two. So one third of zero, one third times zero is zero. Zero minus two would be negative two. That would give me the point zero, negative two. If I plug one third of three, all this is is three times one is three divided by 3 is 1. 1 third of 3 is just 1. It's 3 divided by 3. 1 minus 2 gives you negative 1. 1 third of 6, that's 6 divided by 3, that's 2 minus 2 is 0. So these values would be 3, negative 1, and 6, 0. So now I'm going to graph this. So make sure when you draw this in your notes, you have arrows at the end, and you label your x and y axis. If you graph these, 0, negative 2, 3, negative 1, 6, 0, draw your line, and you now have a linear equation. Your next key idea is graphing horizontal and vertical lines. Now, horizontal, in case you don't remember, is left or right. Vertical lines are up or down. Here are the next two examples of your key idea. The graph of y equals b. Now, what that means would be like y equals 5, y equals 10, y equals negative 1 and a half. If you only have a y, no x at all, your line is going to be horizontal, which means it goes left to right. So here's what the graph would look like. You have your x and y axis, and your line is going to go horizontally, and it's going to cross right here at 0, b. So if it's at 5, it'd be at 0, 5. If it was y equals 2, it'd be 0, 2. If it was y equals negative 3, it'd be at 0, negative 3. Now, the next one is if you have, like, for example, x equals a. Now, remember, a and b are just numbers. They're just variables they're using in place. So if you just have x equals, your line is going to be vertical. And it's going to cross at the point a0. So let's do some examples so you understand this. Example 3, we're just going to do these six graphs all on one graph so you understand what we're doing. So... I'm going to draw one big graph, and you can put this in your notes. Label x and y. And so I'm just going to go to 3. 1, 2, 3. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. 1, 2, 3. The first one says y equals 1. If you go back to your key idea, y equals means it's going to be a horizontal line. So it's going to cross here the y-axis. This is how easy it is. y, y-axis. Here's the y, 
Here's the one. You put a dot on zero, 01. You draw a horizontal line through it. That is y equals 1. y equals 2. You put a dot on the y-axis at 2. You draw your line straight through it. That's y equals 2. x equals 3. Now, x equals is a vertical line. So here's your x-axis. All I look at when I graph these, I see x. Well, then x equals. There's no y at all. So x, I go to the x-axis. I put a dot on 3. And then I draw a vertical line right through it. Now, once again, I didn't draw that exactly right, but it's supposed to go through the 3. Once again, these are only equations that have one letter, x equals or y equals. The next one says x equals negative 1 half. Negative 1 half is halfway between 0 and negative 1, so it would be x equals negative 1 half right here. And there's my vertical line. So that's x equals negative 1 half, and this one was x equals 3 y equals 3 halves. 3 halves is equal to 3 divided by 2. Well, 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. That's easy. So 1.5 on the y-axis. So 1.5 on the y-axis would be right here, halfway between 1 and 2. So that line right here would be y equals 3 halves. And lastly, I'm going to make this one blue x equals negative 1.8. x-axis, here's the x-axis. Negative 1.8 would be about right here. And it's going to be a vertical line. And so that'd be x equals negative 1.8. So vertical lines are the easiest ones you can graph. They're either going to be vertical, I'm sorry, uh, linear equations of one variable are the easiest. They're either going to be vertical, up or down, or horizontal, left to right. Example number four. We're going to put this in a real-life application. The wind speed, y, in miles per hour of a tropical storm is y equals 2x plus 66, where x is the number of hours after the storm enters the Gulf of Mexico. Graph it. That's all we're going to do. So we're going to make our t-table. Whoops. Here's our t-table. x and y. Now here, x is the number of hours, so we can't have negative values. Once again, I would just pick in 0, 1, and 2. All we do is plug it in. 2 times whatever we plug in, plus 66. 2 times 0, plus 66. 2 times 1, plus 66. 2 times 2, plus 66. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 66 is 66. 2 times 1, plus 66 is 68. And 2 times 2 plus 66 is 4 plus 66, which is 70. This would be 0, 66, 1, 68, and 2, 70. Now, here's something new that you're going to be taught. We only need the first quadrant because x values have to be positive. You can't have negative number of hours. So notice I only drew graph or the quadrant 1 on my graph x and y. Now there's something I'm going to do here. You could count by tens if you wanted to. But since you're starting at 66, there's something new that you can do. Rather than actually numbering from 1 all the way to 66, 67, and so on, or counting by tens, you can make a break. And here's how it looks. Rather than drawing the straight line, which I did, you draw like, almost looks like a sideways heartbeat. So it looks like that. And that means you can break. So I'm going to start with, let's just say 60, I'm going to just start with 66. 67, 68, 69, 70. Now my hours, my x values are just going up by 1, so that's okay. So I graph them. 0, 66. 1, 68, 2, 70. Now, this is something else that is new. I do not draw an arrow on this side. Your x value is not 
can't be less than zero because you do not have negative hours. So on this side, we do not draw an arrow. Now there's one more thing I want you to think of. I want to know when this tropical storm is going to become a hurricane. And it becomes a hurricane when the winds reach 74 miles per hour. So let's look at our graph. 74 miles per hour. So that's going to be up here somewhere. Well, let's look at our pattern. 0, 1, 2, 3. Well, that's, it's increasing by 2, so that'd be 72. 4 would be 74. So after how many hours will a hurricane become a tropical, or a, a tropical storm become a hurricane? After 4 hours. Because after 4 hours, it hits 74 miles per hour, which makes it a hurricane. So 4 hours is your answer for part B. After four hours, the tropical storm will become a hurricane because it hits 74 miles per hour.